So we are here at the booth of Mosaic with the CEO of Mosaic. Uh, thank you for, for explaining us the, the array. What is the array exactly? Yeah, so arrays are a solution for fully automated 3D printing at scale. Uh, you have four independent printers in here and a robotic system that automates the process for you. So you, know, you can set up a lot of prints on a Friday, come back on a Monday and you can have uh, dozens and dozens of prints run automatically for you without having to change build plates or change filament or open and close doors or even monitor it. That's cool. If the print is uh, on the one printer a bit lower and on the second printer a bit higher, will the system automatically detect how much space is available in the, in the carriage? It will, yeah. So our Canvas software is, can run this entire process for you for one array or even hundreds of arrays. Mm -hmm. And it's always optimizing. So it looks at the height of your part and it'll find the best place in the storage card to put it to maximize density so that you can have at least three days of, of printing stored on that storage card. And then that storage car can even be wheeled out, take it to a post-processing area, mm -hmm. different part of the factory, different part of the, the classroom, you name it, and you can wheel in a fresh storage cart so that the system can keep on going. But to get to the carriage, you don't have to open the door in front of here, right? Correct, yeah. When this door opens, all of the robotics stop for safety, mm -hmm. but typically you actually just watch this side. It's all automated. Around the back side, which we can head over to, is where all the interesting stuff happens with materials, as well as where you take your completed prints out. Okay, and the Canvas software is similar to the one that the um, casual customers know from the palette? Yeah, so the Canvas software has all the functionality from palette and then there's a lot more that's been built around it because as you can imagine an array has 32 materials that all has to be managed for you as well as sometimes queues of hundreds of different parts so not only is Canvas the slicer but it also helps you manage the entire workflow uh, it tells you when to do maintenance on the system tells you what's going on everywhere and it'll say you know hey tomorrow you need to go add these materials so that the system can run for the weekend or the evening that's amazing. And what materials can I print on this? Yeah, so we, uh, we offer 18 uh, different materials, an entire range, uh, all the way from on the high end, uh, peak and peck, because the heated chamber uh, can, can heat up to 80, you can have the nozzle at 500. And then we can also do soft materials like uh, TPU. Uh, and then of course, all of your commodity materials uh, like PLA, uh, uh, ABS, PTG, you name it. And all in 1.75 uh, diameter all in 1.75 uh, diameter. And there's the Palette X, uh, which is our industrial version of Palette built into each printer. So as you'll see when we head around back, there's actually eight materials per printer. And you can do different combinations of color, material, uh, and you can also have backups. So let's say you're printing a lot of carbon fiber nylon and it's about to run out, it'll switch over to the next one automatically to make sure that you're always uh, running. That's cool. Let's go to the back. Okay, let's so we are at the back from the array. Yes. Uh, what can we see here? Okay, so there's two things going on. First of all, each of the four printers has eight material pods. Mm -hmm. Material pods keep the filament dry, it automates the loading, and it knows what filament is where so that you never make a mistake. Because once you start having this number of materials, it becomes a bit hard to track manually. Yeah. So if we look at this one element at the top, you've got the eight materials there, uh, different colors, different materials. When you send a print through, it'll automatically load the right one in. And mm -hmm. that means you don't have to be there to do that, even if you're switching from a material to material between yeah, prints. Yeah. So I see the material in the Canvas software, which is loaded right there. Exactly. You don't even have to worry about sending it to the right printer. You just send it to the array, and the array will say, hey, you want to print carbon fiber nylon, mm -hmm. we're going to print on the next available printer that has that. You can set the priority, um, and in some cases you might want to print you know, a few thousand of something, it'll just print them as quickly as possible, and then it'll fill up that storage card. So the storage card is where all of your finished builds are, as well as your empty build plates. So here we can see a bunch of prints that are, that are finished, you know, large, uh, manifold, multicolor, multi-material, and then this can be wheeled out by opening this door, um, and you can see a second storage card here. Many customers will get two of them so that they can swap one in when one is full. Okay, you just opened the door. Uh, will this affect the print quality when you have a, a, active heat or a heated build chamber and an uh, ongoing print? Great question. There's really only two things that this enclosure is doing. Number one, um, it's keeping you safe, right? Because it's keeping you outside. Uh, and when the door opens on the front, the robotics can safely stop. Number two, 
is it's uh, allowing for heat and fume extraction at the top. Each of the printers itself has a HEPA filter, but in certain environments, because you have four printers in one spot, you might want to also uh, exhaust the heat so that the room doesn't get warm. Yes. But each printer itself is thermally isolated. So when I open this door, it doesn't affect the printer because the printer itself is, is, is isolated and its temperature is being controlled. It's so well isolated that this printer could be printing peak while this one's printing PLA, and it'll have no impact on the quality of either. Okay, that's amazing. Um, one question. Um, will the printers be swappable for uh, maintenance or for repair or something like this? They are, yeah. So we try and uh, make sure you don't have to take the printer out often, but if you ever did, uh, when the door opens, you can actually take the entire printer out. Some people will actually want a, a fifth printer so that just, you know, their factory is a critical application. They want to be able to swap a new printer in. Uh, so yeah, you can absolutely do that. But the way that we think about it is, and you know, if you think about it, if you have 10 printers in one space and you, you ask, why, why are some of the printers not running? In most cases, it's because a print head is jammed. Mm -hmm. So what we do is our print head is modular. It's really easy to swap. Okay. And so if you, if you did have a print head jam or an issue, rather than the printer being down, taking it out, dealing with it, it's a 30-second swap. And that's because everything we're thinking about is making sure the system has as much uptime as possible. That's amazing, yeah. Um, last question, how much will this beauty cost? So uh, Array starts at 70,000 US or, or Euros actually right now. And the way that we think about price is uh, it's really important to control the total cost of the system. A system that's a couple million bucks is going to be 20, 30, 40 dollars an hour just to own it when you amortize that over a few years. At 70K, it's only a few cents. And that's important because as you go to higher volume, the cost of the part is no longer about just material or labor. It starts to become the, the, the equipment. Expensive equipment makes expensive parts. And the way that we see it, for 3D printing to really scale into manufacturing, you need to have the cost of the part come down uh, to, be, to be low. And that's what we're proud to have achieved with Array. Exactly. That's the beauty of 3D printing. Uh, thank you very much. And have a nice expo. Thank you so much. Hi. Thank you. That was thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.